I'm going to show you how to get ANSYS project um, in a circuit card, put it into um, ANSYS workbench, and then bring the results back into Sherlock so that you can get the reliability results. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, project with a circuit card. I will then um, run the project inside of Sherlock. I will then take the board from Sherlock into um, ANSYS. I will run through the same analysis using ANSYS instead of using um, uh, just Sherlock. And then we will um, and then we will bring everything back into Sherlock to get results. So to make a project, I'm going to grab an ODB archive. This is the same ODB archive that you know the ODB++ tutorial. I'm going to call this project Demo Asia, because you are in Asia. It has a circuit card in it, and you should be familiar with the workings of a project at this point. Sherlock is automatically doing everything that it's doing in the background and everything live, so this is, this is the real speed at which this thing works. And I'm going to load a life cycle. I'm just going to grab one of the life cycles that I have here. And this life cycle has a bunch of loads in it. In this case, I'm interested in the random vibe loads. This is the random vibe load that I'm interested in. And it doesn't really matter what the load is, just know that it's there. And I'm using random vibe as an example because it is by far the most um, uh, sought after analysis from all of our customers is to do a random vibe analysis uh, in Sherlock and, uh, and ANSYS. So I'm going to take the, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm, I'm working from top to bottom, I'm going to um, create the parts from the parts library and essentially at this point once I have loads and once I have all the parts done in the parts list um, at this point usually you would be running an analysis directly inside of Sherlock and the way that it would look it would be a right click on random vibe edit properties and let's take a look at the things that I have here I have a minimum frequency and maximum frequency. I'm going to grab the Z direction load, and I'm going to put some kind of parameters here into the modeling. The important parameters are the PCB modeling and the part modeling. Um, in this case, I'm going to enable in minimum part size, I will do, let's say, seven. Everything else will be disabled. It doesn't really matter if it's enabled or not. For this presentation, I'm just going to have everything else disabled. So it's a pretty pretty simple thing. What happens now is that Sherlock, I'm going to show you what happens. Sherlock in the background is opening ANSYS, and it's creating, you see this APDL script? Sherlock is creating an APDL um, analysis directly into ANSYS batch, and you can see that it's running right here directly into ANSYS Mechanical um, as a batch file. Um, so it's calling the same analysis engine that Workbench would run as well. If you would like to know how I ran this, um, in Sherlock, this is, this is part one of the integration. So Sherlock right now, as far as the user is concerned, ANSYS is working in the background, and Sherlock is doing all of the heavy lifting. So the user does not actually have to know how to use ANSYS at all, and they are still picking up a license and running an ANSYS analysis, if that makes sense to, uh, to you in the background. Um, if you take a look, we have a 3D model that is created automatically in Sherlock, and you should all know this already. I'm assuming that you actually uh, have seen something like this before. So here's the model. Here are the materials that have been applied to it. It's essentially just running a random vibe analysis on this uh, model. Okay, so that's how you use Sherlock with ANSYS in the background, and the user does not actually have to turn on ANSYS at all. Sherlock does everything for you. I have Workbench open here already, and what I'm going to do now is part two is I'm going to do a right-click, export a FEA model, I'm going to give this a, a name. 
uh, here, let me let me let me create a new folder for you, which is uh, demo Asia, and we'll work out of this folder. Um, okay. And I'm going to give this a name uh, Asia.wbjn. Okay. I can select other things, but you, what you want to do for ANSYS is ANSYS Workbench Journal. You're going to do Select File. I don't really have to change anything down here. All of this I already did when I created the model for the, for the last run. I'm just going to have to click on Export File. The Workbench Journal automatically creates the engineering data. I'm going to double click here. It creates material properties for all of the um, objects that we have. This PM001, 00203, and so on. These are the part materials that Sherlock knows how to create on the fly. Um, all of these materials are the same as the Sherlock created materials from the Material Manager. So any of the named materials are just the materials created in the Sherlock Manager. And you can um, uh, have all of their properties transferred directly into, into Workbench. You, we also have a geometry created. The geometry will automatically uh, come into uh, ANSYS once in a while. Um, ANSYS can't find the geometry, but it's this guy right here. So um, Sherlock knows to find it in this uh, folder, but you might move these around, so you might have to look for that uh, geometry yourself. When I click on Generate, there it is. Um, that's the same geometry that I had in my uh, 3D model. I'm now going to open Mechanical by double-clicking the model. All right, you wait for Mechanical to do what it does. Here's the model. Um, there's no mesh right now. I haven't meshed it, but you can insert any kind of mesh command that you want in here. Um, the contacts should come in automatically, so um, ANSYS should create the contacts automatically. And if you click on any one of these material, any one of these named geometries, you'll see that now it has a material assignment. If you click on materials, you'll see all the material assignments for um, individual components and for the PCB. So this is essentially everything you need in order to create the, uh, the model inside of Sherlock, now, inside of ANSYS that came in from Sherlock. But there's a couple of things that we need to do if we want to use this um, board and integrate it with a larger um, geometry, which is Pretty much everyone that I talk to, that's what they want to do. So the way that I create the location for the board, it comes automatically from Sherlock, and it's already placed in its correct location in the global coordinate system. We can't move the board, so we need to move the case or the rest of the system to fit into the board. In order to do that, we need to create a um, location geometry coordinate system to align things together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, to find this hole right here, the top left hole, this hole right here, and I'm going to right click on coordinate system, insert coordinate system, and I'm going to grab some of my geometry. And I'm going to click Apply. And that creates a coordinate system on the bottom plane right here that is aligned to the center of this hole. That's what I wanted to do. And it's, the default is that it's still aligned to the Sherlock global coordinate system. You see the Sherlock global coordinate system that came in? It's still going to be x is this way and y is that way, which is the same as what we have in Sherlock, where x is this way and why is that way? So, um, and, and that's kind of what Sherlock wants. I'm going to take this coordinate system and I'm just going to rename it real quick. 
This is the PCB top left. Excellent. This is pretty much everything that I needed to do in order to do everything in uh, Sherlock. Okay, I'm going to close this mechanical right now, close this window right now, and then let's, let's talk about the rest of what's going on. So right now I just have the materials, I have the geometry, and I created a mechanical model. I will now grab a harmonic response, and I will put it here. I want to do a harmonic response. Now I can just bring this model in, do a harmonic response, bring it back into Sherlock with no problem. Most people, what I'm seeing is that they would like to grab a mechanical model. So I'm going to actually go in here. I'm going to call this, this one is the Sherlock model. And this one is going to be the case model. Okay. I'm going to actually bring in a geometry that looks like this. Just wait for mechanical to open real quick. So there's a case, and it looks like this, and it's placed somewhere in some orientation in the world, okay? And at this point, I don't really care about materials and mesh and all of that. You, you, you know how to do that uh, pretty well, but it's just basically a case, and the, and the board itself should sit somewhere in here. Oh. Meant to do hide face. There you go. There you go. So the board should sit somewhere in here, and it should mount to these, these locations right here. So if you remember the board, this is the top left of where the board needs to be. So I'm going to grab the top left corner here, this top circle, and I'm going to say, let's add in a coordinate system. And this, this one, we will rename it as case top left, okay? Case top left. Now, I do need to align the x and y direction correctly. So the x direction should be in, um, let's zoom out here for a little bit. The x direction, we're good, just going to use this axis as the x direction. And then the y direction, we will do that, uh, any, any one of these that goes in that direction. Okay. And, oh, nope, we need to do that the other way. Okay. So, this is where the board's going to go, and this is the X direction of the board, and that's the Y direction of the board. And that's the only thing that I need to do in the case. Now, if you want to go into Space Claim, if you want to go into Design Modeler, and you want to add holes to it, or you want to add geometry, or you want to modify the geometry, or re-import, you will always have to redo this process. You will always have to redo it. The meshing and all of the other things, I don't really care about. The applying material properties, I don't really care about. The only thing that I care about is that this coordinate system, you need to have it somewhere because the global coordinate system here does not match where the Sherlock coordinate system will, will end up. Okay. Uh, show hidden faces. Okay. And that's all I need to do in here. Now I'm going to grab this model and going to shove it to this. Drag and drop. Drag this model and drop it right into here. Right click, update upstream components. And the harmonic response is almost ready. Right click and view properties here. And you're going to go to the right side where the properties are. And you're going to go to object renaming, which is line number 17 here. And you're going to turn it off. Okay? And then you're going to click setup. And that opens up mechanical. And here you have it. So. If you take a look, the materials, everything is applied materials. The only thing that we need to do is we need to match up the coordinate system. So this coordinate system right here, 
This coordinate system right here needs to match up to this coordinate system right here, which is on the bottom of this left thing. And the global coordinate system for, um, uh, that came in from Sherlock is this guy right here. That's the global coordinate system. So the way we do that is we click on model right here, use worksheet to align sources, click this little button right here, and you click on worksheet. And you're basically going to say the case model, I'm going to move it from the case top left to the PCB top left. So remember, you are moving the case to the PCB. You don't move the PCB to the case. You move the case to the PCB. You click on Set Rigid Transform and Refresh, and you wait. And there we go. So if you take a look at the coordinate system, now we have the global coordinate system, which is right here. We have these two coordinate systems, coordinate system um, from PCB top left and the coordinate system from the case top left, they are in the same location. You have the global coordinate system for the case, you have the global coordinate system for, uh, for Sherlock, and the global coordinate system for, um, uh, for the whole system, basically the combined system, is matched to the Sherlock coordinate system, and that's how I want to do it, okay? This is the PCB top left, and case top left are in the same location, and then this is the case coordinate system, which I'm going to kind of ignore because I don't need it for anything that I do. So that's the alignment of the um, board and the case where we keep the board in the correct location and move the case around the board. Okay, um, while still maintaining the global coordinate system of the case in the same location that it was. That is done. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more things. So in the name selections under the Sherlock model, we have elements for each one of the components which Sherlock is going to use later in order to do what it does for the reliability, and it automatically was created. You don't mess with these. You don't touch these at all. Um, the connections that came in, the connections, the contacts that came in from the Sherlock model should be unchanged. There's only one more contact that should be created, which is all of the contact regions that are between the board and the case, um, and that's it. So, and you can redo these as much as you want, obviously, um, if you want to. Now, in the analysis itself, the harmonic response, you need to insert um, a fixed support. Just grab any location. I'm, I'm just going to, let me grab something here. Uh, here, we'll grab this guy. This is going to be a fixed support. Again, you can do anything that you want with, uh, with regards to the fixed support. Um, you do a right click insert acceleration. You have to have an acceleration. And we're going to define this by, um, you can define it any way that you want. I'm going to do it by uh, components, and I'm going to make sure that in the global coordinate system, I'm doing 9810, which is 1G harmonic sweep for, um, uh, for, this, um, for this analysis. And this matches the same global Z coordinate system that I have inside of Sherlock. You see the one here? That's the same as 9.81 9 um, uh, in, in the same units that I have. So you need to do a 1G. And that's basically everything that you need to do with regards to the loads. The analysis settings themselves, the range minimum 20, just like you had it in Sherlock, 2000. Um, instead of doing solution intervals, you're going to do cluster results, yes. And it, it'll give you a cluster number of four. That's fine. You can do four, three, or five. Usually something like that is okay. Modal frequency range, I'm going to do manual, and I'm going to do it the same frequency that they had here. Let's do the first four natural frequency, uh, although it doesn't really matter to me how many uh, frequencies you're, uh, you're looking for. It just makes the model results bigger or smaller. Um, around four is usually okay. Uh, 20 to 2,000, I'm just going to keep it the same. The only other thing is I need to put the damping control. Um, for electronics, there's a few references that claim that um, 0.02, um, uh, like 2% damping, is a good ratio to have. Um, if you ask me where I got that, it's based on uh, a Steinberg um, uh, approach. So when, why should we use the ANSYS solver? Um, any time 
that you would like to do a integration of a whole system into Sherlock that is not a simple system, like a complex system, this is what you want. When you have the case already as a step file and you want the board quickly from Sherlock, this is when you should use the ANSYS solver. Um, usually I would tell people if you can get away with just doing boundary conditions, just do it in Sherlock and live with it. It's probably easier to do it. And in some cases, you would have a really large um, uh, model that comes out of this. Um, if you are not interested in seeing a big model and you would like to make it slightly smaller, like actually the, the, the thing that's in there a little bit smaller, um, it's mostly for people who want to keep their um, um, their RST files uh, smaller than, let's say, 10 gigabytes. Um, I would say the best method to do that is to basically um, go into that command, the APDL command that you had, and basically put in uh, these, um, these commands, which is um, create a name selection for elements and nodes, and then do an outres um, erase, outres all none, and um, outres here. Um, so I only want the nodal solution for the selected nodes that I select, and I only want the, um, the strain for selected elements that I select. And if you would like to select them, you can either grab them right here in uh, geometry. So I'm going to do like, uh, let's grab a bunch of these guys, right? And then um, do a right click. Uh, hide all other bodies. So uh, let's grab a bunch more. So here we go. So we have a few components in here. And then I'm going to basically right click on where it says name selections. And I'm going to do an insert name selection. And I'm going to select elements with box volume select. Grab all of these guys and do apply. And it creates a selection called selection. And then when I do the command, this is the selection that I have here. So if you have a bunch of them, you can just do CM cell and uh, CM cell A, a bunch of them in here. Um, and that's basically to make a smaller result file. This is not a necessary step. Um, show all bodies. Cool. All right. Essentially, at this point, you just right click, solve, and you are done. You are done with the whole setup for how to run uh, everything inside of, uh, of ANSYS. Um, at this point, the only thing that I care about is the files that are created down here. There should be an RST file at some point that pops up. And when that RST file um, is created, I will show you the last step, which is to bring things from Sherlock, uh, from ANSYS back into Sherlock. Here's my solution. I can even, I can even look at this solution. There you go. So um, this guy, let's do hide. Hide the body. There it is. OK? So you can see that the result only um, gets re reported for the elements that are in the set and everything else. It's still there. It's in the model. It's part of the model. But it just doesn't get reported any, um, any result. OK. So I'm going to grab this result file from down here. ANSYS result file. There it is. It's C1, which is good. That's right here. And I'm going to do a right click, open containing folder. The only files that I need out of here are the file.rst and the ds.dat. I'm going to do a control C on them. I'm going to go to my my folder that we've been working on, Demo Asia. There it is. And I'm just going to put them right in here because that's where we were working for them. At this point, I can close ANSYS if I want to. I can go directly into Sherlock. 
And I'm going to kind of show you what happened when I ran Sherlock on its own. I got a 3D result. So this is, remember, this is the initial run that I gave you, uh, that I did. And I ran it on its own, and Sherlock gives you the displacement and the strain RMS. Okay, and this is for the whole model. And this is a Sherlock-created mesh. You can actually see that it's a Sherlock-created mesh, and it's a Sherlock-created cell. And Sherlock takes that strain result, and it actually creates a life prediction curve for the random vibe for each one of the uh, components. So it actually gives you a life prediction curve for each component in here. Now, I'm going to take this result, and I'm going to modify it, and I'm going to say Edit Properties. And instead of having Sherlock generate the result, I'm going to import the result. I'm going to go into Demo Asia, ds.dat, file.rst, ds.dat. And the only thing that I'm going to do down here is the only one that I can do is the Z direction, because that's the only one that I ran in ANSYS. If you remember, in my analysis settings, this acceleration was only in the Z direction. If I want to do one for the Y direction, I would have to redo this analysis with everything zero except for this one, which will be 9810. So that would be the Y direction one. So I'm going to grab the, this guy, and I'm going to put the file.rst, and then I simply click Save and Run. What Sherlock is doing now, Sherlock is importing those two files, and it's going to do the exact same reliability result because Sherlock doesn't care where it was solved. The only thing that Sherlock cares about is that somewhere you solved it. And it will use the same criteria as if Sherlock solved it itself. Sherlock does not actually care where the solution comes from. And, if, and you can see right now that Sherlock is running the same APDL batch. There it is. It's already processing results. The good thing is, the big benefit is that once I created the file.rst and the file.dat that I have in here, once I created these two, I can run as many PSDs as I want in that direction all day long. I don't have to run it again in ANSYS. That's it. One solve in ANSYS gives me the results. And if you take a look, here's the 3D results, and I'll give you the reliability results. I have a life prediction curve. The strain has been you know, extracted for each one of these. There's an overall life prediction curve for the entire uh, thing. And then the 3D model has, and you can see that this is the same strain and displacement. And even, give me one more second, this is the displacement, and this is the mesh that was actually created in ANSYS. This is an ANSYS-created mesh. This is not a Sherlock mesh. And if you click on other elements as well, here's the case, and here's the board inside the case. So Sherlock actually took the exact same model that you ran in ANSYS and ran an analysis on it, a reliability analysis on it, as if nothing ever happened, as if Sherlock ran it itself with all the case, with all the everything. And the results are only report, reported, even though the results are only recorded for specific components, board strain is still recorded because I brought in the PCB, was part of the name selection. So if you take a look at the name selection here, you'll see that the, as long as the PCB is part of the, the mesh, you are good. You're in the money. And that's the, um, that's the last part of the Sherlock uh, integration. If you do a right-click generate report, Sherlock will actually use the same uh, results that you had, um, the random vibration results that you had, inside of the report as usual, as if Sherlock created it itself. Random vibe results, number of nodes, number of elements, it's all reported from in here. That is all. So that is the sum total. I'm going to give you a couple more things. Um, um, you can do the same thing for natural frequency using a modal analysis. You can do the same thing for ICT using static structural. You can use the same thing in harmonic vibe, basically with harmonic vibe. 
and you can do uh, use everything here for thermal neck with thermal neck. So um, all of the three D analyses should work exactly in the same procedure. Ninety percent of the people, basically everyone that I talk to, this whole integration was specifically designed for this recipe. This is the one that everyone is asking me to do. Um, do a random vibration analysis with the case in ANSYS and bring it back into Sherlock. Or do a random vibration analysis with a bunch of stuff that I want to do to it in, in ANSYS and bring it back into Sherlock to get the reliability results based on PCB strain. That is essentially what everyone is looking for. All right. Thank you, everyone.